hello, thanks for coming. So, a uh, quick update about myself. So, I'm Thomas. I'm, uh, I'm now a full-time employee of Mirantis, who employs me to do, uh, as a full-time job, the open stack packaging in Debian. So I used to live in China. I moved last December in, in Grenoble, so after eight years over there. And so, packaging open stack is my daily job. Uh, so the, this presentation will mainly get you uh, informed about what happened uh, over the last year in the, com in the community of OpenStack and as well some of the new features and new projects we, we have in OpenStack. So let's dive directly into it. So there's a bunch of uh, features that have been added to many projects. Uh, I'll go to some of them, not all. So uh, the uh, erase your code, if, if you know about it, it's a kind of a redundant uh, uh, CRC so that you can recover your files if you have some of the parts of your big file that is missing. So that has been added to Swift thanks to also uh, storage policies. And uh, we can, we can uh, hopefully use it soon in Debian. So uh, I haven't finished working on, on the latest Swift. So uh, also, SR IOV has been uh, added to uh, Nova so that we have uh, virtualized network interfaces. Another very nice thing to, that happened during this uh, last year is that we have IPv6 support for uh, Neutron. Currently, it assigns one slash 64 to every tenant, and that's it, no more, no less. But uh, hopefully, it's going to improve over time. Um, so uh, Glenn sounds now support for the catalog of Murano. I, I'll talk about more about Murano later. And Horizon had previously all of its uh, libraries embedded in Horizon itself. And as you know, it's not nice at all to, uh, for distributions. And they decided to use a new mechanism that they call X-Static, which enables people to use either virtual env or system libraries. So. All of, them, all of that is behind us already. Uh, what everybody um, enjoyed so much during the last two cycles of OpenStack is the new uh, federation system for Keystone, so that you can have a Keystone to Keystone thing or uh, through um, the SAML 2 protocol. So, uh, and then, uh, Finally, after three iterations of it, now we have a Python OpenStack client, which is a unified uh, interface on the, on the command line to control OpenStack. So hopefully, in a few release cycles, we'll have OpenStack something something and not Neutron something, uh, Nova something, etc. So, for example, uh, Keystone already has full support to, for that and already deprecates the Keystone command line utility. Uh, and there's some new packages that appeared in Debian, which I worked on. So, there's a Designate, which is uh, DNS as a service. When it was released for JC, it was kind of probably a preview release, like it wasn't fully working as, as one would have expected. But since uh, I think it has grown, it has grown up as an adult project. And now we have uh, Sahara, which is a, a, a big data as a service. So this is a primary uh, Mirantis project, but it has been now uh, integrated in all the, the, the other projects uh, together. So it's released together with the others. Um, so, Murano is application as a service, so you can Im imagine that you have a list of applications in Horizon, and then you can click on one big icon with, let's say, Apache, and then it will deploy that on your cloud. So, that's, that's what Murano does. Uh, Rally is also now part of OpenStack, and it helps to uh, test your cloud and profiling it. So, finally, uh, Aronic is uh, usable. So uh, just before uh, the Jesse release, I decided that I would remove Ironic from Jesse because Nova didn't have uh, support for it. But this has changed, and now it's fully working with the Kilo release. 
Um, so another thing that happened in the Debian archive is that I started maintaining the latest uh, OpenStack release directly in official backports. So right now you can you can use uh, Jesse backports to install Kilo. So I did that because I wasn't really satisfied to have a non-official uh, repository to provide this to our users. Uh, of course, I am still uh, willing to use PPA when they are available so that I can have uh, a PPA for every OpenStack release. Um, so because like currently, when the next uh, version of OpenStack, which is called Liberty, when it's going to be released, I'll have to overwrite Kilo in, in, in uh, the backport. That's not ideal. So I guess you can still use snapshots.openstack.debian.org, uh, but maybe not everyone is aware of it. So PPA would be a, still a huge improvement for me. So a few pain points that I had to face during this last year. So before the release of Jesse, uh, Raphael upgrade, uh, Herzog upgraded Django to version 1.7, and this broke lots of things in Horizon. Uh, though I'd like to, here in this room, tell everyone that Raphael has been really helpful and he helped me to fix everything nearly. Uh, so all this has been upstream into the Horizon uh, package and then they benefit of all the Django 1.7 uh, uh, fixes. Another major pain point, uh, so like, uh, has been SQL Alchemy, which has been uploaded a few months ago. So this broke a bunch of things in uh, the kilo that is currently in SID. So obviously it didn't break the backports because SQL Alchemy is still 0 0.9. Though um, it's my understanding that mainly tests are broken and not applications themselves, so that's still fine. And then there's another thing which is becoming harder and harder for me is that there's more and more projects to package. So it's not the package themselves, but every new package with OpenStack comes with its own set of dependencies and build dependencies. So I have to work that out. And like, uh, um, there's a few persons that are going to hopefully contribute to the OpenStack packaging in Debian, so it's going to be more smooth for me. And then finally, uh, about Python 3. So Upstream is very aware of the Python 2. Uh, deprecation upstream. I mean, the, and then there's an ongoing effort that has been done uh, upstream to support Python 3, especially by guys from Red Hat, like uh, v some colleagues of uh, Sebastian, like Victor uh, Stiner, and uh, who, uh, Cyril, uh, what's his family name? Okay. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, I've been adding support into the Python packages for uh, the dependencies of OpenStack as, as much as I could. Unfortunately, some upstreams didn't make it. And for example, uh, uh, a few, yeah, I don't have an example in mind, but like, so, uh, yeah, like Tablib, for example, has lots of embedded uh, Python three incompatible uh, packages that would need to be reworked. So if you want to participate into that effort, you can have a look to the wiki.openstack.org. There's a page that gives an overview of all the Python 3 related issues that we are facing currently. If And then um, there's currently blueprints that are being implemented for porting uh, Nova, Neutron, and Keystone to Python 3 completely. And I'm not so sure about when I'm going to do the switch in, in the Debian distribution. So uh, I probably will wait until I have enough projects that are fully ported to Python 3 so that I can do a complete switch over. And then you wouldn't have to have both Python 2 and Python 3 libraries installed on your system, which would be some overhead. So that's, that's the main idea. Uh, yeah, so another thing that happened upstream is what we call the big tent. So it's a, it's, I think it started by a blog post by Monty, am I right? So um, he wrote uh, what he thought, so before the, the big tent thing, we had the concept of integrated release. 
meaning that we have a subset of projects that are integrated and security supported and scheduled to have release dates uh, together. And then uh, as new projects came by, uh, we thought it especially we thought it was more and more important to include everyone. And then Monty Taylor wrote that big, that post about having a big tent where everybody would be welcome to join in. And everybody catched up an idea and thought it was the correct thing to do to include everyone. And then now we have, we are effectively welcoming everyone, even maybe projects that are not uh, as mature as the others. Though what's happening is that we have a set of tags telling uh, what the what is the state of the package. For example, does it have stable releases? Does it have security support and things like that? So that's the thing that I, as a package maintainer, look on to see if it's okay enough to reach the Debian archive. Um, just checking the time. Oh, stupid stuff. Uh, so the effect now is that there is so many new projects that came by. Here's an overview of the packages that are not yet into Debian. So uh, I expect to, I, I in fact worked on most of them already. Uh, like Congress, Dakar, Barbican, Manila, I already have some Git repositories on Elliot for them. So uh, maybe I should give a bit more details about it. So Congress is policy as a service, as in a general policies. It doesn't restrict you to any kinds of policies. Though uh, I could uh, give you an example of policies, like for example, a firewall, you could have some closed uh, firewalls as, as a policy. Or, um, I don't know, uh, uh, you've used that main much of bandwidth and then after some time will restrict you to a slower uh, throughput, things like that. So it, it has a policy, uh, uh, I don't know, a thing in it that will compute the stuff as a general uh, thing with its own language. Zakar is queuing as a service, so it's easier to describe. It's just like uh, RabbitMQ as a service mainly. Uh, Mistral is workflow as a service, so it's like kind of scheduling things in, in a correct order. Uh, so Barbican is, uh, I believe, in a very good shape right now, and it enables you to store uh, critical things for crypto in its secure storage. So, for example, it's a good place to store your private keys for uh, SSL. And then there's Manila as a service, uh, which is, uh, you can read it, it describes itself. So, um, he, he, here it was all the past of what happened over the last year since the last DevConf. The last DevConf. Now I need to talk to you about what's going to happen. So, um, previously we had uh, integrated releases and point releases, meaning that after a stable release of OpenStack happened, we had scheduled uh, point releases every two or three months. Okay, so uh, the release team of OpenStack decided that they would no longer do that anymore, um, meaning that there is still a stable branch that is maintained in upstream Git, but it's up to me as a package maintainer to decide when I release that and to decide whatever I want to call it. So uh, the solution I've adopted so far is to name it after the date when I do it, plus uh, some kind of git, sha, something. So it makes uh, <laughs> version numbers that big, but that, that's okay, I guess. And the other thing is that I'm not so sure about when I should do a, a point release and upload that to Debian. Um, but that's the way it is, I have to, to do with it. And then uh, more and more projects are releasing out of sync, meaning that they decide by themselves when they want to release a new version. So that's really, uh, how can I say? It's not easy for me to, to manage because I have to decide by myself which version of which components are going to be able to work together so uh, for Swift, it hasn't been a pain point, and it has always done like that. 
uh, but for things like Ironic, I have to make sure that it works together with the version of Nova. So the idea was that they would still have versions that would be in sync with the rest of the other projects, but they don't really have to do that. So we'll see how it goes, and hopefully it's going to work well. Um, so another thing that is happening f a bit more on my company, which is Mirantis, is that uh, so we are doing a derivative of CentOS and Ubuntu, which we call MOS, as in Mirantis OpenStack. And uh, it used to be a derivative of Ubuntu, so that basically uh, I was doing the Python module dependencies in, in Debian, and then it would desync into Ubuntu, and then my company would pick them up from Ubuntu and then release MOS with it. So um, after a few uh, meetups, we decided that they would pick up um, things directly from Debian if they can, but still supporting Ubuntu, so that, that's going to happen. So effectively, w after uh, a few of these iterations, uh, we'll have uh, support for Debian directly in, in Tumos, even though that's not what we are selling to uh, our customers. Uh, yet, I hope. <laughs> and then, um, Well, another thing that happened, so during the last Vancouver summit, I had uh, some discussions with Canonical about how could we improve the relation to we have together and how can we more work together on the OpenStack packages. So this kind of discussion has been ongoing for two years. And I've always uh, pushed for more collaboration with Canonical. So. I'm not saying they don't collaborate because they do want to do some collaboration, but it, they, they s there are still some blockers to do some uh, full collaboration and having the same packages in both distributions. So um, on the Juno release, I've done all the, the package de dependencies that they use for, for the Juno release. On the Kilo release it, release, it was done separately because uh, Jesse was frozen, and therefore I couldn't upload directly into Seed and uh, without overwriting both Juno and Ice House. So uh, when uh, Jesse was released on the 25th of April, I used the five days before the release of OpenStack to upload all of Kilo. But then Ubuntu already worked out these dependencies. And then for Liberty, the very good thing is that we decided we would work together on these dependencies, and then, yeah, can I use that mother? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Ubuntu people decided that they would start maintaining these dependencies directly into uh, Debian experimental. So why experimental? It's because, again, I don't want to overwrite Kilo, which is the current stable release of OpenStack. So then I upload all of Liberty into experimental. So I have to do that because many packages go through new, so uh, I, it needs to be there in Debian before the Liberty is, is released upstream. So uh, that is the good thing about the discussion, is that Ubuntu does work in experimental with me together. And then, um, during this discussion, we decided that we would do the packaging into Stackforge. So h who here doesn't know what Stackforge is? Okay, a few. So in OpenStack, we have uh, the GitHub slash OpenStack slash something. And we also have OpenStack slash Stackforge, which is a forge where we put things that are not fully ready yet. So the idea was to put the packaging of the several packages, so like uh, Nova, Neutron, Cinder, all of that, into Stackforge and use the upstream Garrett to uh, gate uh, the, the packaging artifacts there. So Canonical wanted to do it, and then after I, I opened that thread on the mailing list uh, upstream, they retracted 
of that idea and decided that they wouldn't do it anymore. Though my proposition was already ongoing, and uh, there and people from Red Hat catched up on the idea and moved from uh, what was uh, package OpenStack packages. They moved from that to the slash OpenStack namespace. So because Red Hat guys are doing it, I don't see why we shouldn't do it in Debian. So I'm still pushing for it. So the way it works in OpenStack is that you do a patch to the governance uh, uh, Git repository, and the technical committee approves that new project or not. So I'm very uh, happy to announce that on the 13th of August, so like during that camp, this project has been approved by the op upstream OpenStack uh, technical committee. So effectively, we'll be able to start doing that work. Um, s unfortunately, there's mostly some people from Mirantis that are willing to work on that. And I hope that there's going to be others. So I very much welcome people from uh, HP to work on these uh, upstream OpenStack uh, packaging efforts. Uh, so what it means to do upstream packaging. So currently what I do is that I have a Git repositories into Alioth, and then it has a receive hook and then sends that to a Jenkins that builds the package for the backport in Jesse. Um, what it means to use upstream is that I'll have mostly like unlimited computing power resources. Uh, that's the, the words from the infra team in the Vancouver summit. So it means that I'm going to be able to do a lot, lot more of testings. For example, the full deployment of OpenStack using packages on every commit that we do on the Git repositories for packages. Uh, so it's going to go on review.openstack.org, meaning that we're going to use Garrett, and that anyone will be able to uh, uh, propose patches without fearing to break the world. Uh, so um, also it means that it ends the story of should I grant ACLs for writing in the Git repositories or not? Now everybody is going to be able to provide patches and they are going to be peer reviewed so we don't we don't have this problem of security anymore uh, also i hope that we'll i'll be able to do some more testings with few parts lintian and things like that so in fact upstream is already having this kind of test with what they have internally for example um garrett uh, no uh, sorry zool and notpool are, are already built this way upstream as Debian packages for Trusty. So uh, because uh, we agreed to work with Canonical on the OpenStack dependencies, what is going to move to this review system is going to be only the server packages and not all these dependencies. By the way, it doesn't really matter because I see more people interested in contributing to those rather than all the I don't know, Oslo Utils uh, package that nobody really cares about. Uh, as long as it's there, like it, there's no controversy of what functionality it should bring or not. It's just a library. So, um, also, probably at some point, we'll be able to introduce some non-gating tests for upstream patches to make sure that a patch doesn't break uh, whatever is packaged, because sometimes some, some patches do not break the gate, but they do break packaging. <coughs> <coughs> so we also hopefully improve quality and avoid breakage in the long term. And another long term goal is to be able to do packaging from trunk, meaning uh, so from, from master branch of the Git repositories. So currently I package every beta releases of OpenStack, uh, meaning that this for me as a package maintainer, I have a new version every two months or something like that. So like the, the last, the next uh, beta version for Liberty is due for early September for FYI. So another thing that would be nice would be uh, to have Garrett package in Debian. So I already talked about that during a session about continuous integration for packages. 
So um, if, as I said during this session, two weeks ago, I didn't know anything about Maven packaging in Debian. And indeed, yes, um, I'm, how can I say it in nice words? I'm not a fan of it, <laughs> and, uh, I, but I still want to have this happening. Uh, I hope that, uh, I'm sure that I'm not the only one that wants to have Garrett in Debian. Uh, but I'm not sure I'm going to be the only one working on that. Uh, I have to warn everyone that if I'm effectively the only one working on this packaging, I probably will give up. So uh, there's already uh, uh, Johan Stan. Wh where are you? Over there. That helped me a lot, uh, understanding things for uh, doing Java packaging. If I can have, I don't know, like uh, two more volunteers to do the Debian packages, that maybe we can have something in uh, not so long amount of time. So uh, we do need Garrett packaged. Uh, let me check on the time. So where was it? We do need uh, Garrett f within Mirantis to for our own infrastructure, because currently what we do is like everyone, even upstream, we just use the WAR file from uh, uh, Garrett upstream, and then use that to uh, to install Garrett. Obviously, that's not what we do in Debian. We want every Java libraries to be packaged, meaning the and also the build dependencies. Meaning that for packaging Garrett, we need first to package Buck, which is a build system that Garrett is using. By itself, it's already like 30 dependencies, uh, Johan. And then once we have Buck, then we have to do Garrett, which is again maybe 30 packages or more. Take a mic, take a mic. Thanks. So um, we started working on Buck. Buck uses Ant for packaging. And uh, most of the dependencies are already in Debian, I think. There are a few missing. Uh, Jet is the most complex one, but after that, I think uh, we can package Buck, and hopefully, af after packaging Buck, uh, we have a straight line to package Garrett. Uh, oh. Garrett has also a lot of dependencies already available in Debian, so hopefully, uh, it will be okay. So y you feel free to get in touch directly with me if you want to join that effort. So I'm zigo at debian.org. Um, also with me. Uh, yeah, can you can you tell your email address? Uh, yes, it's uh, stan.iugene at gmail.com. Um, I know a lot of Java, but I don't know a lot, a lot of about uh, Debian packaging and especially uh, Java packaging in Debian. So, yeah, thanks. So the idea of packaging Garrett is to have it for me in my Mirantis and upstream in OpenStack. And then the idea is also to have it in Debian. So we already have something like dgate to interface all of the Debian archive with git. What we could do if we have a uh, Garrett package would be interfacing it, Garrett with dgate, for example, or something else, but dgate seems a nice idea. And that anyone could submit a patch against a package. They would have a CI that would run build of the package of the package, uh, pure parts, LinkedIn, and such, with a voting gate, like we do in OpenStack. And then whoever is the uploader or the package maintainer would be set as the core reviewer for the package and would be able to approve the patch or not. So uh, we already have the list of core, core maintainers in Garrett. If you already use Garrett, then you know what is there anyone who doesn't know what a core reviewer is in Garrett? Can you raise your hand if you don't? Okay, so like mostly everyone knows. So, so that that's one of the big reasons that is motivating to me to do it. Uh, another thing which I worked on is porting uh, MOS and Fuel to Debian. So, Fuel is a web interface that helps you to provision uh, 
an OpenStack deployment. So it's mainly maintained by Mirantis, but it's also a community project maintained uh, in upstream OpenStack. And in fact, we're pushing to be it to be more and more a community project. So basically, you have a discovery bootstrap image that the computers are PXC booting on. This one reports what type of CPU, the amount of memory, the amount of hard drives. And then you have it reported on your web interface, and then you can select uh, select the, um, the compute nodes. So yeah, I have a, a few snapshots to, to let you, to show you what it is. So first you create, create a new cloud deployment with some uh, values which you can select. So like here, for example, it's, do you want to use uh, VLAN, GRE, or in, in newer versions there's also support for, for VXLANs and so on. And then on the top left corner, you can see uh, what the discovery bootstrap image uh, has reported. So in my case, in the Debian port, it's using Debian Live. So instead of using a huge initRD file that like is currently in use in Shul, I use Debian Live with the standard Debian kernel, and then it fetches the SquashFS, which is so much faster than, than a huge initRD. Uh, so on the up uh, uh, right corner, you can see uh, the list of compute nodes. So you c of uh, nodes, sorry. Then you can select them and then assign a role that you see on the bottom of the on the bottom screen. So, for example, you you select one machine and say this one is a and my cloud controller or by compute node or storage node, something like that. So uh, that's basically what, what Fuel is, and uh, so I've tried to port it to Debian. Unfortunately, this isn't really on my uh, company's agenda, and I have, I, I'm not pushed to do it on my everyday job, so, but I still hope to be able to provide it to Debian because uh, OpenStack is still very hard to install, and having this would help a lot the, the end users. Uh, so that, that's uh, that's about what I have for my presentation. Um, so if you want to contribute, you can. Uh, I suggest that you read that first page, OpenStack.alios.debian.org. That you join IRC, register to the mailing list. And then uh, if you want to help, one thing that you can do is either go through the list of bugs and try to fix some, or package uh, some f something new. Like I already mentioned, uh, for example, Mistral. I haven't worked on that at all. So that would be a good exercise if you want to join. And then after you will understand uh, how everything is working. Though I have to admit that, uh, so Andreas Tiller did uh, uh, mentoring of the month uh, with some someone that he helped to package Manila, and I have to admit that maybe the the curve is a li little bit steep to do the first package. So it's when once you have done one, then it should be it should be okay. Uh, like because there's there's some specific things to packaging an an OpenStack server that you don't really see on other packages. Um, then, uh, because there's lots of security fixes, having help on security fixes back, back ported to Jesse would be very helpful. If someone here in the room wants to take care of this, I would very happily delegate that, that uh, role in the team. Another thing you could work on is uh, joining docs.openstack.org and uh, contributing to the Debian in install guide and then uh, finally, we are hiring in, in Mirantis, and I hope to, uh, I have a few candidates, but uh, basically it would be uh, either someone that would work on upstream code or someone that would work with me on, on working on Debian packages directly in Debian, 
or somebody working with Puppet uh, for the deployment. There's many, many roles. But me, I'm mostly interested, interested in finding somebody working with me on, on packaging OpenStack in Debian. Yes? Yeah, so anyway, I was I was finished. So I'm open for questions. There's 10 minutes. I was hoping to leave more time, so maybe 10 minutes will be short. Uh, the first, the first, I actually, actually on the slide, the documentation on workflow that still has you building Debian packages against the private Mirantis Debian repo. No, but no. where's the updated documentation around the um, OpenStack uh, Garrett workflow? Upstream OpenStack Garrick workflow is not uh, there. What you see on openstack.io.debian.org is to maintain the packages in Debian, not in Mirantis. Okay, well let's talk about it afterwards. <laughs> All right. So, uh, is there any, any other questions? So, uh, would there be anyone that would be interested in having a buff later on? So, if, if you are interested, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, enough then. Okay, so I, I'll add a session on the on the board on the blackboard on the lobby then, or maybe we can decide uh, just after the this when to do it. Any any question? Yeah. Okay, that might be a little bit naive question, but. Assuming I would start packaging, how to test uh, OpenStack packages? Should I have many computers to test to build my own cloud environment, or should I do something else? So, yes, you can do that. Uh, do, uh, every OpenStack package has a set of unit tests. So uh, it's been a, l a big part of the work of doing the packaging to also make sure that the unit tests are working properly. Once you have done that, then you can run Tempest. You know what Tempest is? So Tempest is a set of functional tests. So um, in the archive, there's a package called OpenStack Deploy, and this has scripts to deploy a full OpenStack uh, cloud inside a single machine using QMU and not uh, KVM. So that's what I use after a release to make sure that OpenStack is functionally working. So uh, I'm not yet getting every patch on that, but I hope it's going to happen afterwards. So currently the what I do is just like package everything for a release, run that test, and then if I have not too many failures, then I consider it passed, and then I say, okay, I release like, like say OpenStack Kilo. You, you could do that. Uh, so all that is uh, shipped and in Debian. So you just look at the sources of OpenStack uh, uh, PKG tools and OpenStack Meta packages and OpenStack uh, Deploy, which is in OpenStack Meta packages, and then you, you, you'll find that. Any other question? So. Uh, y who in the room has already deployed uh, OpenStack? Oh, I'm surprised. Nice. Who uh, here in the room has deployed it on Debian? <laughs> okay, nearly the same amount. Um, so that's that's good. So maybe you can tell me what kind of pains you had using the packages I've worked on. I'd be very happy to hear about that. If it's not a question, just some feedback. Come on, I'm sure there's loads of issues. <laughs> Just no, no one, no one wants to tell about any problems you found. You found? Okay. <laughs> we still have plenty of time, so if yeah. you want feedback, please. Looks like nothing. So I would uh, thanks again. Yeah, there's a question. Ah, okay. Come on Sorry. here. Hello, uh, we didn't use the Debian packages back then, but the Ubuntu packages back then, and uh, it was quite annoying that, um, why? 
Ähm, It's not DebConf, doch, DebConf uh, just uh, keep asking questions and... Uh, so why don't you use the non-interactive mode then? Uh, yeah, afterwards we told it, okay, just get out of our way, uh, use non the non-interactive mode, but then still sometimes when you do backup it gets, okay, I didn't have uh, the opportunity to ask that question and ask them again during updates, uh, so that was one minor issue we had with that. So what you can do is dpkg reconfigure devconf and then say you are always in non-interactive mode. Yeah, later on uh, might be an option, but this was our first setup and it was quite a bit annoying. So all right. just the feedback. All right, so one of the reasons I maintain all these devconf things is also for my CI, because I want to be able to deploy the full of OpenStack without using Puppet scripts. And that's how I configure OpenStack to be able to do functional tests. So uh, one of the things I've been thinking about was having a file called uh, etc openstack uh, debconf or something, and then no debconf, and then if it was there, then just disable everything. So yeah. would it be, be something you want to use? Could be an option, yes. Yeah, so, okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, so my question is, how fast can you install uh, OpenStack with the new packages on OpenStack on Debian right now? For example, for someone reading the documentation and having uh, general knowledge about networks and stuff. Someone new to OpenStack that don't know anything about it and wants to uh, set it up? Mostly. He has a ba basic understanding of cloud and how stuff works. Just for uh, like a, t a setup lab. So I think it would take that person some amount of time to just understand how to make sense of that t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, uh, yeah, so like you have to understand which component is for what, and that can take uh, some amount of time by reading documentations. Once you have done that, like maybe a few weeks, uh, to make sure you, you know what to set up and where, then uh, you could uh, try in one, one day to set it up and one week to debug it. <laughs> like the, the most painful part is always the network. And uh, so I've, I've made, I'm maintaining some meta packages to try to help people to know which components go, go, go where. For example, there's an OpenStack compute node that deploys the uh, neutron agent and uh, the compute agent on, on the node. So uh, that's one of my long-term goals is to make it super easy with you. <laughs> OK, thanks. So the Kilo installation guide for Debian, Upstream, and OpenStack was removed because it's broken because it doesn't work? Are we on track yeah. to get it back in Liberty, or do we still need a lot of work? Okay. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a set of, pay of install guides that the OpenStack project links to, and they link to SUSE, Red Hat, uh, CentOS, Fedora, and Ubuntu, but not Debian anymore. So in fact, I, that's, uh, how can I put it in a nice way? I'm, I'm not happy about what happened, because uh, some, someone from Rackspace, which I won't tell the name, uh, opened a bunch of bugs against the documentation for uh, OpenStack in docs.openstack.org, which were more rents than uh, real actionable, actionable bugs I could have actions on. <laughs> and then uh, finally the it was removed because I wasn't watching the list and one of my colleagues was supposed to work on it and then he was assigned by his boss to do something else. I, I mean, so stuff, stuff happens. Mainly I yeah. just want to know for Liberty, do so we have a good list of uh, the yeah, things so that we need to get done? And then for when Kilo was released, um, uh, they started to do the conversion from the Maven XML documentation to RST, and then I couldn't work on it at all. It was like frozen. And now the RST conversion has happened, I believe, for the install guide, and uh, now a blueprint for implementing the documentation for Debian has been approved as well. 
and hopefully for Liberty, we will have the Debian documentation for the install guide back again in uh, stringdocs.openstack.org. So that's something you could use, hel use help on? Sure, sure. Excellent. And Because uh, so you don't need much experience to try out the install docs and see if they work or not. That's yes, something correct. That's something just about anyone can do. Yep. And as well, you could use, uh, so currently you could use the Juno uh, documentation, which is still online. But of course, it would need updates for Kilo and Liberty, which will never happen. So, <laughs> yeah, well, that's one one thing that that needs a lot of help and that everybody can work on. Like now, it's RST format; it's not the, the silly XML Maven thing we used to have. So it's easy to work on. Okay, right? so our time is run over. So yeah, uh, the, uh, one okay. more question. The last question. <laughs> Uh, is there a preferred network stack in Debian OpenStack, or you're just using Neutron as the network component? Because I've read, I've, I haven't experienced myself, but I've read that there are scalability problems uh, with Neutron. And I don't, don't remember the t this alternative software from Jupyter, I think. Yeah, so uh, that's one thing I didn't mention, but uh, in Neutron, we used to have all the drivers that were contained in Neutron, and now all the Drivers for specific network vendors have been taken out of tree and packaged uh, in separate packages. So I haven't worked out all of them because there's so many. Mm. Uh, I believe maybe 12, something like that, 10 or 12. And um, so Neutron is the definitive stack that you should use. And then you can plug some hardware vendor drivers on top. Uh, the, the scalability problem that you are referring to is probably with GRE tunnels. So as you s have more and more uh, compute nodes, you have, and you use GREs, GRE tunnels, then you have a kind of mesh of tunnels, like uh, for n nine nodes, that would be nine times eight times nine seven, so fa factor of nine. And this can also uh, bring a huge load on your CPU. But since now we have VXLAN, so uh, I think VXLAN is the recommended way to do networking these days with Neutron if you don't use a network vendor driver. So okay. off the shelf hardware that you can, that has support for VXLAN is the best option if you want to go cheap, right? And otherwise, yeah, you can use Juniper, Melanox, or this kind of vendor mm. uh, that have s specific hard, uh, network hardware designed for OpenStack. Okay, thanks. Okay. All right. So. Thank you, then. Thanks again. There is going to be a buff from what I yeah, understood. So yeah, we'll do a buff. And thank, thank you for everyone for attending. Okay. So thanks, Zigo, for the presentation.